thousand miles away, ten hours. From a technology point of view, you know, and we have more than two and a half thousand engineers with us. What does it take to communicate like this virtually, real time? Can you address that? Absolutely will. Of course, you know, this experience and the delivery of my image to you uh, comes across the IP network, which is the global network uh, that is enabled by technologies made by Cisco and others. So the IP network as a platform to deliver these kinds of experiences are fundamental in order to enable this. Secondly, our telepresence technology that delivers high definition video mm -hmm. and very high quality audio is a v another big part of the solution. And Cisco, of course, ties all of that together in our collaboration architecture. But this image comes to you live, not just across Cisco's network, but across multiple service providers' networks. So the network as the platform for these experiences is really the key enabler. So Martin, um, had it give us a roadmap, and you know, you can't pre-announce new technology, of course, but had it give us a clue. Um, when will the, this technology be so pervasive and that you virtually will stand next to me here and I could walk around you? Give us a clue, give our technology people and a vision. Is it three years out? Is it five years out? What has to happen? Absolutely, Wim, and that's where it gets really exciting. You know, uh, you're still seeing my image there projected on a, uh, you know, almost two-dimensional screen. But in order for you to literally walk around me and even see the back of my head when you stand behind me, uh, we need to render a full three-dimensional image on stage with you. Now, that is possible today. However, it takes about a terabit per second of bandwidth. So, you know, that's not very feasible. However, uh, in about four to five years from now, uh, as the network capacity grows, but more importantly, as processing power increases, and we can compress these video images even further, we fully expect that uh, I'll be able to appear with you as a solid, high-definition, three-dimensional image on stage so that, in fact, we can interact. We can't shake hands with them, but other than that, I'll virtually Almost. be there. <laughs> I can, yeah. Martin, <laughs> again, we have a specific role with CCIE engineers, and, and I, I, I talked about the Internet of Things, about new industries that will be created, uh, a different way that citizens will consume services, e-governance, but also healthcare, education. I think that it will create fantastic opportunities. And that nowadays, uh, some of our CCIE engineers um, are certified in five technologies. What do you think, being responsible for emerging technologies, and it's uh, leading uh, the technology um, development in Cisco for smart grid, um, for transport, and for a couple of things you don't even want to talk about yet. <laughs> Will there be DECA certified, certified engineers? That's a great question, women. And when you think about technology, I absolutely agree with you that technology will drive country transformation uh, in a sustainable, but also in a, uh, a scalable manner. And that is where it becomes really exciting because location will become less important. But knowledge will enable this transformation delivered through technology. And whether you talk about education delivered in a virtual model or whether you talk about healthcare or whether you talk about you know, exporting talent from your country or importing talent into your country, depending on the need that exists, uh, those geographic boundaries and the boundaries of distance and time is going to start fading away. And it becomes really, really uh, fascinating and exciting as countries like Bahrain, in fact, think about how they transform their country, how they make it more sustainable, more competitive, and more fair in terms of what they're trying to do. So Martin, you repeated uh, what this whole conference and this network session is going to be all about. It is knowledge is power. It's about the vision of Bahrain, about competitiveness, around sustainability and fairness. So, in closing, Martin, if you address almost 3,000 engineers, should they invest in knowledge? Should they embrace this Internet of Things? Should they learn constantly to become perhaps DECA-certified CCIEs with innovation coming out of this world? 
what would be your closing remark to inspire Martin and to motivate? Well, you know, um, uh, I'll, I'll say what I often say to my own children, which is, you know, it, the future will be about what you know, and it will be about knowledge. So the better educated you can become, uh, the bigger the role will be that you will play in the future, whether it's, you know, working in energy and smart grids or whatever role you may have in the future. And so when I'm an engineer sitting in that audience, uh, you know, I would absolutely encourage you to, to embrace where technology is going but then consciously think about how you can use it in your own role and in your own job. Because technology enables every one of us to be an innovator uh, as we think about new ways to work, live, play, and learn. Uh, and if we apply technology in a, in a different and a new manner, we, we all innovate. And that's the exciting part about this book. Martin, thank you very much for joining us virtually. I know it's an, uh, an early morning for you. Thank you for that and you have a long productive day to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin De Beer. Thank you. In closing, I should like to invite Sheikh Ahmed, Cabinet Minister, on stage with me. Please join me. Excellencies, dignitaries, business leader, press, media, distinguished delegates, it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to Cisco Networkers. For friends on return journey, I'd like to welcome you back to Bahrain. For new visitors, I hope you benefit from the experience of attending Cisco Networkers and leave us with the lasting memories of the warmth and hospitality of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Before looking to the future, doing Cisco Networkers, I'd like to take you into our past and quote, the land of Dilmun is holy, the land of Dilmun is pure. These words come from one of the oldest poems in the world. It was written 4,000 years ago in the ancient Sumerian city of Nippur. The poem talks about an island of paradise called Dilmun. Closely resembles the Garden of Eden where death and sickness that does exist and sweet water flows. Ancient record shows that Dilmun was also a crossroads between East Arabia, Central Asia, Persia, and the Indus region. Yes, we are a nation steeped in history. A history where trade, communication, was as important to us 4,000 years ago as it's now. However, technology has changed with Dow's of Dilmun and camel trains of history have been replaced by high-speed international network and ICT ecosystem. My relationship with ICT began in 1988 and by 1995 a strong strategic partnership had developed between the government of Bahrain and Cisco Together, we have delivered the Government Data Network, or the GDN, one of the first network of its kind in the world. Today, we are working together to meet our strategic goals set within our National Economic Strategy 2030, including increasing capacity of our network and as well ensuring the highest level of government services available to the public and businesses. I believe in ICT. I believe in e government. I believe in e education, e commerce, telemedicine, and more. 
I believe in ICT as a main driver for the economy of the Kingdom of Bahrain. I believe in ICT as a pillar for attracting global business.